So how do you learn mathematics? This is a very important question, especially for school students in middle school, high school, or even elementary school. One of the ways that we use at Chinta is called learn by experiments. Just like physics, chemistry, biology, or other sciences, mathematics also has experiments. The good news is the only laboratory equipment that you need is a pen and paper, and in some extreme situations, you can also need a computer. I'll give you an example, and I have talked about this in the recently published book, Akchinta, an invitation to Math Olympiad. You can check the link in the description for that. We go into great detail about experiments in mathematics. Here is one such experiment, and I will show you how you can learn just through experiments and deduce results. This is much more fun. So suppose I ask you, what are co-prime numbers? Okay, so co-prime numbers are two numbers, A and B, whose GCD, the greatest common divisor, is one. For example, you will quickly realize that three, four, or any two consecutive numbers are co-prime to each other. That's great. Now suppose I ask you to produce examples of two co-prime numbers which are not consecutive. So you might say, oh, okay, so just take two prime numbers. Let's say 2 and 13. That would work. Yes, absolutely. That's the next example, next class of examples rather. Can you create an example where none of the numbers is prime and none of the numbers is consecutive. Here is an idea. If none of the numbers is prime and none of the numbers is consecutive, then basically they have different prime factors. So what you do is that you take two prime numbers, P1, Q1, and you take two other prime numbers, R1, S1, and you try to create two different numbers. So you just multiply P1 and Q1, you multiply R1 and S1 and you say okay these two might be the two numbers the only catch is these two numbers can be consecutive I'll give you an example 2 and 7 which is 14 and 3 and 5 which is 15 both are composite numbers they are not prime numbers but they are consecutive they come one after another Remember, the example that we are trying to construct, both of the numbers have to be non-prime and non-consecutive. So we see that it's failing here. So this actually brings us to a question. The question is, can you describe all such quadruples of prime numbers, P1, Q1, R1, S1? P1, all of them are prime, such that P1 times Q1 is equal to 1 plus R1 times S1. So they are consecutive. Can you find such quadruples of prime numbers? Here is a question. How many such quadruples of prime numbers are there which satisfy this quality, this particular property, up to 100? You see how I'm constructing the questions. Now I start the experiment. Of course, the first step of the experiment is done. We already constructed one example. What we're going to do is we will continue writing several examples that might work. So here is a challenge for you. Here is a challenge. Find all quadruples. all quadruples of prime numbers such that all of them are smaller than 100 all of them are smaller than 100 with this particular property you multiply two of them it's one more than the product of the other two so once you do that once you write down all such quadruples in fact if you start writing it down and go up to like the sixth or the seventh quadruple you will notice something very interesting 
you will notice that one of the numbers one of the numbers is always 2 this is crazy because you just found it computationally you can also do this using a computer this is a hypothesis that you are discovering you didn't know this earlier you are just writing down examples now you are discovering hypothesis that one of the four prime numbers must be 2 it's not proven it's an it's a claim now the question is how do you prove it so you see what just happened you did examples or experiments with a certain pattern then you reach a sort of a generalization one of them has to be two and then you sort of construct a problem in number theory and then you try to prove it this is the whole cycle start with experiment reach a hypothesis try to prove it I will give you a challenge problem can you find such other experiment to hypothesis routes in number theory or combinatorics and give me a sort of uh, example that you can construct of a problem it's a different kind of a challenge right I end this with a simple note right now this is done in a big way in the world of machine learning in fact Terence Tao one of the world's greatest mathematicians have recently published a very interesting blog article on it on this I would encourage all of you to read about read it essentially the idea is kind of saying it's called machine assistant theorem and proof discovery I would encourage all of you to go to the internet and find this blog article and read about it I think you will enjoy it a lot thank you for watching this video I'll see you in the next one